Testing is going to be a major operation that happens from now until the situation is over. It's new, it's technical, it's complex, it's a political football. But testing does a number of things for us. Uh, number one, it reduces the spread of the virus by finding people who are positive, tracing their contacts, and isolating them. That's a function of testing. Testing also, what they call antibody testing, you test people to find out if they have the antibodies. Why? Because if they have the antibodies, they can donate blood for convalescent plasma, which is one of the therapeutic treatments. So you want to find people who had it so you can identify them to donate uh, for convalescent plasma. Uh, th the testing also can tell you the infection rate in the population, where it's higher, where it's lower, to inform you on a reopening strategy and then when you start reopening, you can watch that infection rate to see if it's going up, and if it's going up, slow down on the reopening strategy. Okay, so there are different forms of testing for different purposes. Uh, all of them are important. It was vital for any state, I believe, to first get a baseline study of where you are on the infection rate. All we know to date is the hospitalization rate. How many people are coming into hospitals? That is all we have been tracking. That's all we know. And then from that, you've had all sorts of anecdotal extrapolations on the hospitalization rate saying, I think the infection rate is this, I think the infection rate is that. I said, I want to have the infection rate. So we have undertaken the largest, most comprehensive study of New York State to find out what is the infection rate. Uh, and that we started a few days ago, sample size so far of 3,000 people statewide. Let's find out what the infection rate is. Uh, we have preliminary data on phase one, and this is going to be ongoing. We did about the 3,000 tests. We're going to continue this testing on a rolling basis. We'll have a larger and larger sample, but I want to see snapshots of what is happening with that rate. Is it going up? Is it flat? Is it going down? And it can really give us data to make decisions. Uh, we did 3,000 surveys in about 19 counties, 40 localities across the state. The surveys were collected at grocery stores, box stores, et cetera, and that's important. It means you're testing people who, by definition, are out of the home and not at work, okay? What does that mean? I don't know, but uh, that has to be a factor that's taken into consideration. These are people who were out and about shopping. They were not people who were in their home. They are not people who were isolated. They're not people who were quarantined, uh, who you could argue probably had a lower rate of infection because they wouldn't come out of the house. These are people who were outside. Uh, these are people who were not at work, so they're probably not essential workers, okay? So that has to be uh, calibrated. But what we found so far is the statewide uh, number is 13.9% tested positive for having the antibodies. What does that mean? It means these are people who were infected and who developed the antibodies to fight the infection. So they had the, they were infected three weeks ago, right? Uh, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, six weeks ago. But they had the virus, they developed the antibodies, uh, and they are now, quote unquote, uh, recovered. 13.9%, just about 14%. Break down male, female. Female, 12% positive. Males close to 16%, 15.9% positive. Uh, regionally, 
Long Island at 16.7, New York City at 21.2, Westchester Rockland at 11.7, and rest of state 3.6. This basically quantifies what we've been seeing anecdotally and what we uh, have known, but it puts numbers to it. Rest of the state is basically upstate New York, 3.6. Uh, it was been about 7, 8% of the cases that we've had in the state. Westchester Rockland, we had an initial significant problem. Remember, Westchester had the largest, hottest cluster in the country at one time, 11%, uh, so it's literally somewhere in between. New York City, 21, which again supports what we knew anecdotally. Long Island, 16.7, so it's not that far uh, behind New York City, and it is significantly worse than Westchester Rockland. We've been talking about Westchester Rockland and Nassau Suffolk basically is one, but there is a variation with the Long Island numbers. By race, uh, Asians about 11.7 percent, African American 22 percent, Latino Hispanic 22 percent, uh, multi none other 22 percent, white 9.1 percent. This reflects more the regional breakdown. Uh, African American and Latinos are uh, in this survey disproportionately from New York City, and New York City is at 21 percent. Uh, so the African American number, Latino number is 22 percent, but uh, and the upstate whites, they're talking about more upstate, which is nine, but it's uh, 3.6 in the survey. By age, uh, nothing extraordinary here. We did not survey anyone under 18. So it starts with 18 years old, 18 to 24, 8 percent, 45 to 54, 16, uh, 75 plus, 13. Uh, but it's a small percent of the total. Again, how many 75-year-olds were out shopping and about? That is the group that's supposed to be isolating because they are the most vulnerable, 65 to 74 also. Uh, but that's the distribution. The, again, the sample was by def definition people who were outside the home. So we have to analyze that. Uh, what does that do to the numbers? Uh, but that is a factor that has to be taken into consideration. The, if the infection rate is 13.9%, then uh, it changes the theories of what the death rate is if you get infected. 13% uh, of the population is about 2.7 million people who have been infected. Uh, if you look at what we have now as a death total, which is 15,500, that would be about 0.5% death rate. Uh, but Two big caveats. First, it's preliminar pre preliminary data. It's only 3,000. Well, 3,000 is a significant data set, but it's, it's still preliminary. And when we say there are 15,500 deaths, that number is going to go up. Those deaths are only hospitalization or nursing home deaths. That does not have what are called at-home deaths. Right? This is, doesn't include people who died in their home and were not in a hospital or a nursing home. We still have to compile all that data. And then the at-home at deaths, you have to go back and try to find out what was the cause of death for those at-home deaths and then add them to the number of deaths connected to COVID. It gets even more complicated because in California, they're now finding deaths that go back to last December or January that they believe were COVID-related. And people didn't even know about COVID at that time. So if you then go back to December and January and start to look at the number of deaths and uh, check them for a COVID-related death, I don't even know how you do that practically. 
you'll see that total number of, of deaths go, go up. But that 15,500 is not an accurate total number of deaths, in my opinion. Well, in fact, it's not an accurate total number of deaths because it does not count in-home deaths, at-home deaths. Uh, it's not accurate because there will have been many other deaths that were never tested for COVID that should be attributed to that number. But with those caveats, uh, that's what we see in this survey. It also supports the uh, decision that we talked about to have a regional analysis and decision making. Upstate New York is 3.6%. New York City is 21%. What you do in a place with 21% is not the same thing necessarily that you would do in a place with 3.6 percent. It's just not. Uh, it's the same theory that some states open now and New York doesn't because the facts should dictate the action. And if the facts dictate the action, when you have different facts, <clears throat> excuse me, you have different action. So when we talk about a regional analysis, on reopening, that's exactly right, because look at the facts in that area. Sorry. <clears throat> but there's a second complicating factor, because there always is. What you do in a region still has to be coordinated because you have a pent-up demand in the whole tri-state area where one region opens up for business you could see people come in from literally from the tri-state area and overwhelm that, that region. Uh, we try to rationalize with Connecticut and New Jersey because there have been facilities in Connecticut that were open and you have all sorts of New York license plates there. So yes, regional analysis, but understand on that regional analysis that you still exist in a tri-state area with millions of people who are looking for something to do to get out of the house and put the kids in the car and go. So that has to be factored in, because that is a significant factor. Uh, we also have to do more to get testing in the African-American and Latino communities. We talked about health disparities. This state did not have the kind of disparities we've seen in other states. Uh, but I want to understand them and I want to address them. There are going to be a number of factors why you could have a higher percentage of positives in the African American Latino community. There were existing health disparities. There were existing comorbidities, uh, underlying illnesses, diabetes, etc. Uh, I also believe you have a greater percentage of the quote unquote essential workers who are African American and Latino. And while everyone else or many other people had the opportunity to lock down at home, as terrible as that was, the essential workers had to get up every morning and go out and drive the bus and drive the train and deliver the food uh, and do all those essential services that allowed people to stay at home. Uh, also, you have more people in the New York City area. Uh, more people getting on subways, getting on buses, more people dealing with that density, and we know that's where uh, it communicates. But uh, New York City Housing Authority, we're starting more testing today at New York City Housing Authority uh, facilities. You talk about public housing. I was a HUD secretary. I worked in public housing all across this nation. That is some of the densest housing in the United States of America. Uh, people crammed into elevators, crammed through small lobbies, uh, overcrowding in their apartment. Uh, so public housing does pose a special issue and it should be addressed. I also want to get more testing in African American and Latino communities all through the New York City area. Uh, including Long Island after this. Uh, I want to work with Congressman Hakeem Jeffries uh, and Congressmember Yvette Clark and Congressmember Nydia Velasquez to help us work with the churches in those communities. The churches have volunteered, many of them, to be testing sites. One of the problems is finding a testing site. 
uh, but many churches have said they would be willing to use their facilities for testing sites as we ramp up the testing. I want to get it into the African American and Latino community and using the churches as a network I think is going to be extraordinarily effective. But this is something that New York should lead the way on answering this question and addressing this issue.